Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We've got ourselves a college football fiesta today. Um, I wanted to go through every single game and give you something a little special, but I have got one hour to get out of the house, and uh, my family's actually scrambling right now, so you might hear things and screaming in the background. But I want to fly through. Uh, like I said, I wanted to do every game. Not going to be able to do every single game. Boom, kind of center myself here a little bit. Get it going. Um... But I highlighted a few, and I tried to stick to mostly top-tier guys. Not even necessarily top-tier games. There's some good games, but there's not really, you know, elite talent. Um, with the exception of one player who I wanted to keep in just because I already put in the work, so I'm just going to leave it at that. But Florida Atlantic versus Oklahoma. The player profile is going to be Marquise Brown, Oklahoma slot receiver, five foot eleven, 165. Likely a second-round guy. Um, he's got some blazing speed. He has an estimated 40 time of about 4.36. So um, I've got him going to the Texans, which got all the surroundings here. If you notice, I've been picking a new team every time. Um, but um, I think with the Texans, the biggest thing, especially, you know, second round, is maybe not your primary need, but I, I don't know what to think of the Texans. They've got a quarterback, but how much of that was a fluke? They have a good defense, but they can never stay healthy. They've got a great wide receiver, but the guy can never get a consistent quarterback to throw to him. If they can stay healthy, they can make a real push. And now in the second round, you know, first round, okay, get an offensive lineman, whatever, right? Primary importance. Second round, though, you get yourself an elite wide receiver. And I, I call it elite, but, you know, you get yourself a solid slot wide receiver to complement the guy on the outside that everyone's paying attention to. You give your quarterback somebody else to throw to in uh, Marquise Brown, blazing speed on the inside. I think it's one of those things that can help push you over the edge. Uh, next game I've highlighted Texas versus Maryland. Again, I'm going wide receiver, but we're going to the other end of the spectrum. This is Colin Johnson out of Texas, six foot five, 220 pounds, kind of in that second round range. Not elite speed, probably high four fives. Um, you know, four six would be really unfortunate if he runs that, but just an absolute monster. Um, team I went with is the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, they got their, I mean, they're another team that's kind of in flux, right? They're a very old team. They're kind of going to be losing some people, some pieces. I'm not really sure how to get a good gauge on the Cardinals, but they've got their young wide receiver, or their young quarterback. Fitzgerald is on his way out. I don't know if this is, I think it's his last year. I don't really know. I always think it's his last year, and um, he keeps coming back. But either way, eventually he's going to be on the way out. Then you're going to have Christian Kirk slide into the slot. I would assume, unless he just plays out of his mind on the outside. Maybe you want to keep him there, but I would assume he's going into the slot. Who do we have to throw to, right? You've got your unbelievably talented running back. I, I don't really even know what to make of your defense, but you've got a great slot receiver. You've got a great running back. Get you a big monster on the boundary. Um, you know, and you can keep building on that. You're going to need another, another guy, probably a solid route runner type, but this is just a big go up and get it going to help you in the red zone type thing. You know, you've got David Johnson and Christian Kirk. That's going to help you a lot between the 20s. You can fly down the field, but what do you do when you get into that compact area down at the end of the, the red zone? You know, David Johnson's scary, and obviously his touchdown production is not a problem, but if it's me, I want to get this big guy in there to help me in those, you know, just somebody to kind of push push the other team around, right? Next game, Oregon State. Oregon State versus Ohio State. I'm not going to mess around here, especially first week. We're going Nick Bosa off the edge. Ohio State, six foot three, 270, possibly the first overall pick. Mm, I'll say likely, but um, maybe possibly is probably the best, just because it's so early and there's also Ed Oliver and there's other people. There's quarterbacks. You know, if, that's obviously the priority. If any of these guys really step up, maybe. Um, team I'm going with is the Jets, and um, the primary reason is I'm, and I, I don't really have my own draft order, so I just go over and, and kind of look at where people have them ranked, and the Jets were number one where I happened to look, and I just looked at the Jets, and I said, nope, they're not in a position to pass on them, right? Basically, the criteria is who's first? Do they already have two elite edge rushers? If not, that's the team. There you go. The Jets get Nick Bosa. Um, next game, Furman versus Clemson. Going with Clellan Farrell, Cleland. Keep calling him. I called him Clellan for a year. It's Cleland Farrell, edge rusher out of Clemson, six foot five, two fifty, possible top five guy. Again, for that reason, I'm looking at an early team. They actually had some weird rankings that I didn't like. I think the Dolphins are just going to be complete trash. But either way, I think that's a good fit. Um, 
they're just in complete rebuild mode. So just get good pieces, and this is a good piece. Uh, Washington versus Auburn. Um, I didn't really want to put it in there because I feel like it's a game that I don't really want to watch. But you got to watch Trey Adams if you're if you're going to be scouting people. Trey Adams is a possible top ten guy, six foot seven, three oh two. He's an absolute monster. I'm going with the Seahawks. I know it's lazy to keep going Seahawks offensive line. It's also there's could be a discrepancy if Trey Adams is a top ten and the Seahawks are kind of where they usually are, late teens ish, early twenties ish. But it's possible Trey doesn't go top 10. It's also possible the Seahawks have a terrible year. I'm not convinced that they're not just going to completely tank this year. Obviously, they have a quarterback that can drag them quite a ways. They still have some remnants of talent around them. But I don't know. I, I think there's a possible pairing, at least to get within striking distance to, to make a trade or whatever the case may be. Um, next game, SFA versus Mississippi State. I looked up what SFA is. They're not even worth reading out loud what it is. Uh, quarterback Nick, Nick Fitzgerald, um, not a great quarterback class, but he is one to keep an eye on. Mississippi State quarterback, 6'4", 230, possible first-round candidate. And I got him going to Pitt only because I think they're going to be end of the first round, and I'm looking for a team that um, Steelers, obviously, I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to do this real quick, and I'll be upstairs very fast. Thanks, buddy. I told you. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers, I know they got Mason Rudolph, but um, – that threw me off a little bit, but I I don't I don't like I never liked Mason Rudolph last year. I don't think he's going to be any good. I think he's looked terrible in preseason. I just he's not the guy I want to pass the reins off to. And I don't know if if Nick Fitzgerald's is the best guy, but I'm not afraid to take another shot. Uh, Michigan versus Notre Dame got Rashawn Gary. He's sort of the uh, Aaron Donald of the class. Every year there's got to be an Aaron Donald. Obviously they're never going to end, end up being Aaron Donald because nobody will ever be Aaron Donald ever again. But um, he's that guy this year, interior pass rusher type guy, possible top 10 defensive end, 6'5", 280 pounds. I got him going to the Colts. I, I don't necessarily like the um, negativity toward the Colts. I think they're going to be better than what they're they – were, they were basically top five on this list, and I'm looking at it going, really? I, maybe, I don't know. Um, I know their offensive line um, did – they did, they did some good work there. They got to work on their defense. Um, I think the offense is, is kind of getting to that point where you feel a little better about it. Obviously, great quarterback, T.Y. Hilton, all that stuff. But the offensive line was a problem. I think we need to just shift entirely over to defense. And if you're within striking distance of this guy, I think I think you're in a good position. Come here. Come here. Uh, you want to help me? All right, go upstairs, Colin. Thank you. Um, next game, Alabama versus Louisville. I've got... Uh, what am I doing? Who am I talking to? I've got Afrony Jennings. Uh, the biggest thing with Afrony Jennings I don't understand is what position does he play? Because everywhere I look, I see that he is an inside linebacker, but everyone's talking about him as an edge rusher. I don't know why. Uh, I want to figure that out. I think if he's an inside, so 6'3", 262, I think if he's an inside linebacker, um, I'm going to say he slides into the second round, and I got the Browns taking him in the second round. I know they had a really good run defense, but I don't think they have very good linebackers. Um, if he's an edge rusher, I'm going to say he slides into the first round because of the priority of the position, and I'm going to have him go into the Packers. Packers have two picks at the end of the first round. I feel like a lot of the other guys you talk about as edge rushers are going to go a little too early. I don't think the Packers are going to trade up. Um, so end of the first, Afrony Jennings has a possibility there. The final game... LSU versus Miami, I got Greedy Williams. I would say possible top 10. I'm just, I'm not feeling it at this time. So I'm just going to say first round pick. Um, LSU cornerback, 6'1", 182. And I've got him going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Kind of that middle of the first-ish, probably early 11, 12-ish kind of area, which is kind of where I see Greedy Williams right now. They got Grimes, but he's pretty old. Carlton Davis is a complete unknown commodity at this point. Let's just get ourselves the lockdown guy, and at some point you're going to have Carlton Davis, Greedy Williams, and I think that's something you can feel pretty good about. Anyways, I got to get going. Rather great. Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.